Good morning everybody. Just thought I'd get out for a quick ride while the rain has stopped and we can have a little chat about the suspension on the Super Adventure S. So my bike has the tech pack installed which gives you all the additional software. Uh, you only get the suspension upgrades with the tech pack or the suspension pro pack both of my ktms i just had the tech pack installed because when you start picking and choosing between different packs i think it works out dearer so the modes there's five different modes with the suspension so comfort which what my bike is in currently which i was the first time i used it yesterday just to see what it was like off-road advanced which is where you can set it up completely for yourself everything's in there the only thing i use on that is the anti-dive which makes the forks act a little bit like a, um, a gs and it just stops it resists the nose diving under heavy braking auto which is what i use most of the time sport street and back to comfort so <clears throat> going to work on this the other day i just sat on the motorway cruise along but i'll give the the comfort mode a go just see what the difference is and it's still in there at the minute because I've, I've not used the bike since so i i commute to work on the m62 and there's a section along there which the ground must move underneath the motorway and it, it always tends to ripple again uh, along that section now there's i don't know maybe for about a quarter of a mile the sort of peaks in the tarmac and when you hit them it's it's quite a jolt so going along there in comfort mode it just takes that initial it just softens the initial part of the travel up it seems and it and it just smooths out any of them sharp sudden lumps and bumps so for long journeys if you're going to eat a load of miles up on the motorway i think that'd be the one for me so as I said before, most of the time I use this automatic mode. It does a pretty good job. Um, so where I just mentioned along the M62, you got them sharp peaks. It can be a little bit jarring over things like that. But as I said, the majority of the time, in fact pretty much all of the time while I've had the bike, I've just left it in auto. It's been perfectly fine for the type of riding I do mix of uh, little roads like this country lanes yeah it's, it's it does a very very good job so we'll just skip past sport for a minute and we'll just double go at street and see what the difference is in so first impressions off street um, it's a little bit firmer than auto not that it's giving a rough ride but you can definitely feel the bike isn't uh, moving around as much underneath you and it's just just a firmer feeling as if the compression has just been up slightly uh, there's just a bit more resistance Cracking the bumps. So yeah, it's definitely stiffer than auto. Just, there's a the road there is just a little bit rough, and you can definitely feel it through the bars, just sort of chattering away a little bit. Not bad, not uncomfortable. Just yeah, as I was saying, there's just that that firmness has been introduced. Yeah, so that's it's definitely stiffer than in auto it's not uncomfortable the road is a bit rough about there on the bigger bumps it's fine it is probably more similar to my, my i've got a 98 vfr probably a similar feeling to that more like a traditional sort of sports tour i feel uh, we've got a bit of a national road here now so we'll um we'll whack it up into sports and see what we get there Instantly that is stiffer again. 
feel every little bump in the road. We have a slip there on the white line. Yeah, this is a lot firmer. Yeah, instantly it's much firmer. Uh, it doesn't feel dissimilar to my Super Duke that I had. Now I did take that to Kai's suspension I had that set up for my weight. Now that made a hell of a difference. Now if I was going to play with a full automatic mode then I'd advise the go somewhere and have it set up. Obviously it's easy to tweak but they'll get you in a good starting position. Yeah, finding the sports setting to be quite harsh. So the sports setting, it's quite, I'm finding it quite harsh. Definitely over all the small sort of bumps and lumps in the road that you'd normally expect. The back on this is usually very, very plush. That's, that's totally disappeared. It's not bouncing you around out the seat, but just that initial softness has just totally disappeared. So we've just dropped back into auto mode. I've also dropped into rally mode just to have a little bit of fun. a little bit over that little bump then. The anti-dive, now as I said earlier, that makes the suspension on the front act like the telelever suspension on the GS. So under braking, or definitely heavy braking, it will stop the front of the bike diving. Right, so I'm on a quiet road here. Um, 30 mile an hour, second gear. I've already disabled the anti-dive, so let's see what happens. You instantly feel the difference, so turn the anti-dive back on. Same again, we'll get up to 30 mile an hour, second gear. And there's nowhere near the same amount of movement. <clears throat> Feels a little bit strange initially when you first start using it, but you, you very, very quickly just become accustomed to it. So the final mode that we haven't touched so far is off-road so obviously we need to find a little bit of off-road which comes to the end of here 
There's a nice long stretch, nothing too difficult, it's just rough. So obviously for that we will change the bike into off-road mode, disable the ABS. Yeah, so it, it, it's nothing too difficult, this is, this is the smoother section of it if I'm honest. So yeah, this isn't exactly the most challenging of lanes. Um, if you watched my previous video, we went across some much more difficult terrain. Um, but unfortunately, this is the only lane we have around here. Now, if you have watched my other videos, I'm still on the uh, standard Mitas tyres, which are really not very good for this sort of thing So this is Rivington. Oh, it's Rivington Pike up there. And you've got Winter Hill, that's your TV mast behind us. And we'll just carry on down here now. So as you can see the surface is quite rough. But it's not jarring. It does quite a good job. Morning. Very, very slippery. Just coming up to the what we call the Pigeon Tower. Uh, sort of a halfway point on this lane, maybe a third of the way. Um, a little picture there next to the pigeon tower and uh, we'll carry on along this road now so back to the suspension um, obviously this is continuously just rough there's no let up um, the suspension does a pretty good job so back to the suspension um, obviously the, there is an absolutely no let up on this surface it's just continuous small sharp pointy rocks um, but it's doing a pretty good job you know, I'm not getting bounced off the pegs and the, the bars aren't getting rattled out my hands or anything um, It's pretty easy to keep control. He says famous last words. <laughs> right, that's 
quality off-road done. So we'll just have a little bit of a play along this road now. Start making our way back home. So I'll go back to rally mode. Let's get going. So just a quick one this week, um, hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into the main suspension moulds, like I said I'm not going to go into the advanced, start tweaking this and that. So thanks very much for watching, for everyone who's, who's already subscribed and who's carried on watching my videos, thank you very much, it's appreciated. If there's anything you want to see, anything you want to know, then leave a comment. If there's anything you want to see or anything you want to know, then please leave a comment. So just a short one this week, guys. Just a brief overview of the different modes available, if you have the full software package, and how they, the different modes differ and how they feel to me. If there's anything else you'd like to know, anything you want to see on the channel, then please leave a message, leave a comment. If you like the video, please like it. If you don't dislike it, please tell me why. So thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, if you've liked the video please give it a thumbs up, if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, leave something in the comments, let me know why, if there's anything else you'd like to see on the bike, anything you want to know, again please leave a comment and I will do my best to accommodate you. So until next time, have a good one.